Joseph Z, one of our favorites, is giving us a spiritual boost on things as he joins us via Skype from Greece. Pastor Joseph, thank you so much. For, sorry, not Greece, you're in Turkey from Ephesus. Man, that sounds like a Bible location. How are you doing? <laughs> it sure is, Josh. It's good to see you. Good to see you, Rachel. I got to tell you, the Spirit of the Lord is speaking through this eclipse narrative and I just, uh, I sense a powerful window that we are all stepping into as a nation and globally, Josh. It's really profound. It was fun to see you guys in Arkansas at the eclipse and doing that. We were in Texas actually getting ready to come on this trip to the seven churches uh, when the eclipse happened. And so we experienced it there where you are while well, you were in Arkansas. Oh, that's so awesome. Well, I'm, I'm so excited to talk to you. I'm like, oh, I need to like hear what Joseph Z has to say about this. But can you share some of the prophetic things that God has shown you about this eclipse and even for the year 2024? Yeah, absolutely. I'll tell you, Rachel, when this eclipse was leading up, there were so many profound signs, significant events. Of course, we all are familiar at this point with all of these cities called Nineveh and all of it. At the beginning of the year, the Holy Spirit had spoke to me before I understood this Nineveh word scenario, that there was going to be a choice given to the United States, that it would either bend the knee to fire or it would bend the knee to Nineveh. And I believe the Lord is just saying, hey, this is a test and you need to pass it. You need to see this. So in my life personally, when I was in this, the Lord sometimes speaks to me and uses me as a prophetic act or a, a, a demonstration prophetically, much like Agabus. And what happened with us is I began to have this word that we were to go to the seven churches in Turkey, right on the heels of this eclipse. So my family and I, we flew over here with some of our team. We're meeting Rick Renner. And we left on April the 8th. The day of the eclipse is when we flew out. And our trip is a 40-day journey because the Spirit of the Lord, I believe, is saying to me, there's a 40-day word, the same type of scenario Nineveh was given, and it's an opportunity for the nation to begin to get its mind and heart in a place where the Spirit of the Lord can speak to them. Now, there's so much to this. So my journey starts with the seven churches in Revelation. Then I have a number of very serious uh, leaders I'm meeting with in different nations and locations. But then at the end of it, I go to get this, Noah's Ark. I go to Noah's Ark, the one in Turkey. That's where the Lord's taking us because it's the days of Noah and all of it. But I just got to say, I believe there's a 40-day word that God is saying to the nation right now, Josh. So, Pastor, tell us a, a, briefly a little bit more about this 40-day word and how the church can pray during this time and the, and the significance. And by the way, I've always wanted to go to Noah's Ark, so I'm, 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 uh, I'm going to be following you online very closely to see all your journeys. Oh, brother, well, we'll have to do it together sometime. But I'll tell you right now that this 40-day word, the Lord began to speak to me about how Nineveh was given 40 days. Now, I don't believe literally in 40 days America's going to turn around or something's going to happen. It's a type and a symbol. I believe it's a shadow. It's a picture for this nation. And there's a 40-day prophetic act he's sending me on. But I sense for the United States, if they will even humble themselves a little, if there's a humbling and there's a softening in the culture, there's going to be a humbling narrative that the Lord begins to hear and act. And I believe we're going to begin to have longevity in the nation. And so here's something that happened. I was praying just the other day. I was seeking the Lord. I was coming to a place of understanding with him. And I saw this 40-day word. And as I was looking at it, and as I was really seeking him, I got a glimpse. I had a prophetic vision of seven years, seven years. And I was reminded very clearly of Genesis chapter 41, where Joseph in the Bible, of course, had seven years of preparation, and then a moment happened, and then there were seven years after. I believe this eclipse, this 2024 year, is a year of pivotal decisions. And then I saw seven years beyond this, where the Lord said, no matter what happens, even under difficulty or duress or challenge in the nation, he was going to begin to make a way of provision in the middle of all of this chaos that's trying to manifest. I saw seven years down the road. And the Spirit of the Lord is saying, I am with you every step of the way. I'm going to bring you through this. You will come to the other side. And then I got the scripture that we've been praying and preaching since 2020. And that is Psalm 126. When it says, the Lord delivered them, when the Lord delivered them from their captivity, they were like those 
who dreamed, that they began to sing songs of joy, that they began to just say, my goodness, look what the Lord has done for us. And it's like the Lord was doing a surreal deliverance for the people that are involved in that. And I believe this is a word for the church right now. This is a word for every believer. The eclipse has come, the eclipse has gone. And I believe on the backside of this, we are in a 40-day window of sensitivity, of hearing his voice, all the way up to the day of Pentecost. And on the day of Pentecost, I believe, is another pivotal decision for the nation. Now, I think earthquakes are going to rise. I think challenges are coming. But in the middle of this, I am telling you, God is making a great way and a great way of provision and a great way of right-sizing in the midst of this. It is not his will that this nation goes down. It is not his will that any nation goes down but rather he's giving us an opportunity to right-size and come into order with him. And I believe we can see the very best days ahead. But I got to say, this next year, I think is going to be a year of fire. No matter who wins the White House, no matter what happens next, I believe the Spirit of the Lord is going to begin to bring a right-sizing. I heard the words fire in 25 and pick up sticks in 26. But none of these things are meant to scare us. They're meant to prepare us and bring us great hope and victory. I believe God is on the move with us. That is so encouraging, uh, Joseph. I love hearing your perspective. And I mean, man, there's just like so much going on. There is the eclipse. There is the earthquake in New York. You know, there was the bridge that collapsed in Maryland, the Francis Scott Key Bridge, um, which he's, you know, the one who wrote, um, what was it, the Star Spangled Banner? Yes. Um, and so I'm just like, is that a prophetic sign about, a, you know, attack on America and our freedom? This is an election year. There is the eclipse. What's your like final perspective on it all? Are we living in the end times and are these signs of the times? Well, these are the last of the last days, I'll tell you that. And I, I believe that these are signs of the times that Francis Scott Key Bridge, when it went down, Rachel, you know, he wrote the song, our, you know, our national anthem right there, just, just moments away from that bridge. He wrote that song. It is absolutely an assault on the nation. But I have to tell you, I believe the goodness of the Lord will be seen in the land of the living. And I believe the, the word and some of the final thoughts I have with this is this, that there's going to be old wells be dug. You're going to see a do-over year this year. You're going to see do-overs all the way through the year. And the spirit of the Lord is going to begin to take things back from darkness that were stolen from many of you. And I believe what's happening is this is a sign. It's a sign that it was dark in Egypt, but it was light in Goshen. And God's going to bring you through in the middle of this adversity. I'm telling you, God is with you. And there's going to be a silver lining to all the mess that we're experiencing in the days ahead. And that is God's going to provide for you. He's going to take care of you. Uh, I'll share this one more thing. I was doing my grandmother's funeral just this last year, a year ago, a year and a half ago. And I was standing by some water. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, come near to me. And said, the U.S. and many nations are going to see a downturn in this next season. But the Spirit spoke to me and said, but not you and not those like you. I will preserve you and I will take you through. So just like the Ark of Noah, just like the days of Noah, there's going to be a preparation and provisionary anointing for those that have ears to hear and follow him through this time. I'm telling you, God is going to make provision and protection for his people going into this coming season. Pastor Joseph, I love the faith that you're speaking and the hope that you are giving that in these times we can have the peace that surpasses all understanding and we know who we belong to and we know that God is in control. Thank you so much, Pastor Joseph, for your insight and for your prophetic voice. And we're going to be praying for your trip. It's always great to uh, get heaven's perspective on things, especially since there are so many world events happening right now.